Hey there, Eric Gall here from Empowering Ability. And I have a question I want you to reflect on. Would you want to live in a place where you're forced to live with three other strangers and there's four people that are working where you live? And there's high turnover of those people. So there's new people coming and going, working where you live all of the time. Is that a place where you would want to live? I want you to think about that for a minute because I have yet to come across a person that says, yes, Eric, that is where I want to live. So I doubt that you are that person, <laughs> okay? Um, maybe, that, maybe there's a first here, but you probably guessed that I'm talking about group homes and describing what that actual living situation would look like. So here's the fundamental truth is that people with developmental disabilities do not want to live in group homes. People in general do not want to live in group homes. So let's go deeper here. I want you to think about what that living environment would actually feel like. Okay. What would that actually look like? What would that feel like? So first off, you're forced to live with strangers. These are people you don't know. So would you want to live with strangers. And then I want you to add into that, that those strangers have some sort of disability, right? And that disability is going to require, um, some support for some of those needs to be met. Now, when that happens, it means we need more people working more hours in that specific location because there's more needs to be met, right? Um, so there's going to be more paid support. So what does this mean in that living situation, right? We're not only living with strangers, we have paid workers working where we are living and they're coming and going all the time. There's high turnover. There's new people in our home all of the time, right? So think about what that be would feel like to live in that situation. Also in that situation, Someone else is set, setting the rules. Someone else is saying, you can do this, you can't do that. And we don't think about those. We, like that doesn't happen in your home, right? In your home, you're thinking about, well, what are the rules that we wanna live by, right? And maybe you're negotiating some of that with other people that you live in, but someone else isn't specifically setting those rules for you. Also in that group home environment, you have someone always looking over you and someone controlling you. You can't do that. Okay, you can do this. You have to wait to do that, right? You can't go there, right? You have to wait till such and such, right? Or you gotta wait till tomorrow or next week, right? That's not a natural living situation. So when you start to think about that environment of living in that group home environment, it becomes a very controlling, oppressive, stressful situation to be living in. And when we think about home, I want you to think about this question for a minute. When you think about home, what are the things that you think about? You don't think about being controlled. You don't think about living under someone's rules. You don't think about living with strangers. That's not what comes to mind. What comes to mind is more than likely is home is a place you feel safe. A home, home is a place you feel free to do what you want. Home is your sanctuary. So a group home is a very different uh, living situation than what everybody else considers home to be. So the group home model is broken. It's oppressive and it needs to change. Governments need to stop funding group homes because it creates the idea in our minds that the group home model is the only model for people with disabilities. And that's just not true. Okay, now you're probably asking the question, well, Eric, what else is there, right? What's the solution then? Well, I want you to think about this as well. So I want you to think about what that solution is. And the question that I propose to you is, what does everybody else do? When thinking about home, what does everybody else do? There isn't one specific model, right, in terms of living. When we're thinking about what does home look like, we, we think about many different options, right? Do I want to live in an apartment? Do I want a roommate? 
Do I not want a roommate? Do I want to live alone? Do I want to live, you know, with family? Do I want to, um, you know, rent a townhome? Do I, where do I want to live, right? We have control, some control and choice over where we're going to live as well, right? So those are the sorts of things that I want us to be thinking about in terms of the solution and thinking about, well, what would be best for that person, right? What's best for the person with a disability rather than just thinking about a specific model and enclosing that person uh, with that being the only option and putting them in that enclosed box. So thinking about what's best for the person, okay? And so we wanna be doing that for our loved ones with a developmental disability. So if you're struggling with this, you're like, well, Eric, like those other things aren't going to work for my loved one. I want you to stretch your thinking. So I want, again, if you're struggling, a starting place can be just to think about what would our loved one, uh, what would it look like for our loved one to live in an apartment? And I know some of you are saying, Eric, that's never going to happen. Okay. If we're thinking that it's never going to happen, guess what? It's never going to happen. But there's no harm here in stretching your thinking. So this is just a thought exercise. I want you to actually think through this. What would it look like for your loved one to live in an apartment, just to rent an apartment, right? So think about how it could work. If our loved one were to live in an apartment, to rent an apartment, how could that work, right? What, would it, what are the things that our loved one would maybe be doing or would, would they need to learn? What are the sorts of relationships that our loved one would need to have in their life? What type of supports might our loved one need in their life, paid or otherwise? Uh, what type of technology might our loved one be using or leveraging to live in their own apartment, to rent in their own apartment? What type of financial supports might be needed to be put in place? Would our loved one uh, benefit from maybe having a neurotypical roommate or a supportive roommate? What could that potentially look like? So as I'm listing things out, maybe this is becoming a little bit more of a option or a possibility, but I want you to go through the actual thinking of what that might potentially look like. And of course, there's many different living situations in just an apartment, but that's a starting place to start to stretch your thinking a little bit in terms of what's possible. What would be best for your loved one? Because a group home is not best for your loved one. Now, if you're still like, Eric, I kind of hear what you're saying, but you're not, you're not totally buying it or you're not totally believing me. There's a podcast I want you to listen to. So I'll link to it below uh, the video here. And it's uh, an interview I did with Lynn Siegel, who is um, the CEO or the executive director of Hope House in Virginia, Virginia, USA. And Hope House used to run group homes and they had 125 people living in group homes. And they went through this exact thinking um, that I'm sharing with you in terms of really starting to figure out that that living environment in a group home is not a good living environment for people uh, and how it's oppressive, controlling, and it's not a home. So they started to think differently. How can we help people create homes? So they helped these 125 people move out of group homes and into their very own home. So I want you to go listen to that podcast because I think it's going to be helpful for you to continue your thinking. So again, it's linked below. And if you want to continue this thinking with me, I've got an upcoming workshop where we're going to be thinking through how to create an awesome ordinary life with your loved one, which includes home. So again, I've got a link below where you can register for that workshop. It's totally free. So I invite you to do that. So I'm Eric Gall. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to leave a comment below uh, the video here. Love to hear from you. And together, let's take a small step forward this week.